Welcome to today's show. I am your host, Pastor Ursula Murphy. I have a powerful message that I know will bless your life. Come in and join me into a show that is already in progress. I'll see you in a moment. Let's go to the Word of God on today, Mark's Gospel, Chapter 5. Mark's Gospel, Chapter 5. I just want to say Happy Mother's Day to all of the mothers, amen? The grandmothers, the surrogate mothers, the stepmothers, the foster mothers, amen? You are a mother in Zion. If you're helping anybody, supporting and comforting anybody and embracing others and Amen. Giving wisdom to anybody. You a mother. Amen. So we esteem you and we honor you on this day. Mark's Gospel chapter 5 beginning at verse 21. We're going to read about uh, 20 verses or so. Amen. So stand to your feet and let's get down with this word that God has given us today. Mark's Gospel chapter 5 beginning at verse 21. And when Jesus was passed over again by ship unto the other side, much people gathered unto him, and he was nigh unto the sea. And behold, there came one of the rulers of the synagogue, Jairus by name. And when he saw him, he fell at his feet and besought him greatly, saying, My little daughter lieth at the point of death. I pray thee, come and lay thy hands on her that she may be healed and she shall live. And Jesus went with him and much people followed him and enthroned him. And a certain woman which had an issue of blood 12 years and had suffered many things of the physicians and had sent, spent all she had and was nothing better but rather grew worse. When she had heard Jesus, she came in the press behind and touched his garment. But he said, she said, if I may but touch his clothes, I shall be whole. And straightway the foundation of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. And Jesus immediately, knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him, turned him about in the press and said, Who touched my clothes? And his disciples said unto him, Thou seest the multitude thronging thee, and said, Thou who touched me? And he looked round about to see her that had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing that was what was done in her, came and fell down before him and told him all the truth. And he said unto her, Daughter, thy faith hath made thee whole. Go in peace, and be whole of thy plague. But while he yet spake, there came from the ruler of the synagogue's house, certain which said, Thy daughter is dead. Why trouble it the master any further? As soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, he said unto the ruler of the synagogue, Be not afraid, only believe. And he suffered no man to follow him, save Peter, James, John, and the brother of James. And he cometh into the house of the ruler of the synagogue, and seeth the torment, and them that weep and greatly wailed. And when he was come in, he said unto them, Why do you make the weep? The damsel is not dead, but sleep. He laughed, they laughed at him and scorned him. But when he had put all out of the room, he took the father, the mother to the damsel, and them that were with him, Peter, James, and John, and entered into where the damsel was lying, and said unto the damsel, took her hand, and said unto her, Talitha kumi which is being interpreted, damsel, rise. I say unto thee, rise. And straightway the damsel arose and walked, for she was 12 years old. Father, we thank you, God. You're going to empower and impact your people in a very significant way through the word of the Lord on today. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Now this Jarius is who I want to zero in on, amen. He was a leader of the synagogue. Jarius, amen, was a supervisor over the worship services and he was a teacher in the schools of theology there and he had close ties to the Pharisees, those that were religious leaders in the land. This Jarius was 
a well-respected man, a very prominent man. He was in a seat of authority, and everybody knew who he was. Amen. But this same Jairus, although he was connected to a religious group of leaders called the Pharisees who had their own doctrines of belief, you know, who, amen, believed that they, they way was the right way and Jesus' way was the wrong way, amen. And he was connected to this kind of people. But what I like about Jairus is, uh, although he was a leader among them, amen, he was a proven statistic that sometimes you can be going through something and dealing with something that is beyond yourself and you're faced with some kind of situation that you don't know what to do about. You don't know how to handle your problems. You don't know how to deal with the matter at hand. And what I love about Jarius is that despite of his prominent position, he understood that his situation required someone that was bigger than him. Are you hearing me? He understood that despite of who, how men see me, amen, and they may see me as a significant prominent man in the land, but I'm dealing with something that I've got to get some assistance on. I've got to get God help in this situation. It's bigger than me. Come on, somebody. It's wear, wearing me out. It's beyond my control. And I've come to the place where I can't deal with it anymore. i got to get to Jesus. Are you hearing me? And so Jarius' cry he comes to Jesus and he begins to bow himself down in the presence of God, in the presence of Jesus. And his cry is, Lord, help, my daughter is at the point of death. Now this daughter, amen, although Jarius called her a daughter, Jesus called her a damn soul. And so I want to tell you, amen, through theology study and research what this word damsel means. It, it, it means a female gender, but not only that, amen. The word damsel also means one who ministers to the king. In other words, the one who is bringing glory and honor to God is faced with death. Mm. Oh, I wish I had a church. Anyways, I'm going to preach by myself. The one, glory to God, who loves God with all of their heart and all of their mind, come on somebody, is in a sticky situation and is faced with the devastation and they are at the point of giving up to the place of even dying. She's at the point of death. So this daughter, Jesus calls a damn soul. Amen. She's 12 years old. Are you hearing me? And to us, amen, the number 12, a 12-year-old 12 individual is considered somebody young, an adolescent. You know, we consider her a little girl. But how many of you know that according to the Israel custom, she was not a little girl? At the age of 12 years old is the time of maturity in Israel's custom. You know, when the boys make 12 years old, they fall into what is called a uh, bar mitzvah. In other words, they, they have fallen and entered into manhood. And so although we think she's a little girl, she's actually a matured individual. She's considered an adult. Are you hearing me? And the number 12 means order. The number 12 means establishment. Are you hearing me? And so, in other words, this damsel had reached a time in her life where things were established. Her purpose is understood. Her destiny is set in motion. Are you hearing me? She's already gone through the training and the development and the schooling that she needs to be considered a mature adult. And so her purpose is already understood. She knows who she is. She knows where she's going. Her destiny is already set in motion. She's apprehending what God has designed for her life. Are you hearing me? Her life is in order. Amen. The plans are in place. Mm, God Almighty. Hallelujah. Have you ever gone through a thing, glory to God, where everything looked like it's well and everything looked like it's in place and everything that you prayed for and believed for, are you listening? And you've gone through the process of development like this little girl has and you've already endured some things in concerning the school of teachings and the school of life, the school of learning. Are you hearing me? You've, you've gone through the tests. You've gone through the trials. My God, you've suffered 
suffered some mishaps, you've recovered from some setbacks, and you've had a place now where it seems like you're stepping into your moment and all of a sudden everything go crazy in your life. Yeah, when you see me go hard, go up with me, all right? I'll let it yellow go hard. I go up and down, you know, yeah, but when, when I go hard, go hard with me. Come on, ride or die, ride or die, son, ride or die. <laughs> I feel like having church. <laughs> hey, glory. <laughs> right into her divine moment and everything goes crazy. You know that moment. You know that moment you've been praying about. That moment you've been waiting on. Come on somebody. That prayer that you prayed that it looked like it's coming to pass and flourishing in your life. The things you've been believing God for and asking God for and hoping for. Come on, somebody. And it looked like you're at that place and that divine moment in time, but all of a sudden, you experience some tragedy. Come on. And what you've got to do, grow up with a guy, you got to walk through that season of your life. Are you hearing me? Yeah, yeah, what you work for, what you live for, what you've asked for, what you hope for, amen. You begin to experience some kind of crisis. And that is what is happening in Jared's situation. His daughter is at the point of death. And here it is. He's come to Jesus concerning the situation because it's beyond his control. Even though he's a man of authority and even though he knows how to command people and they go and command them to come and they come. He's at the place now where he needs some assistance from God. And so he comes to Jesus and he said, my daughter is at the point of death. Come on. And he's waiting on Jesus. Are you hearing me? He's waiting. He's waiting. He's waiting. And here it is, no matter how critical his situation is, this woman who has an issue comes and interrupts Jairus' intervention. Some kind of way, she steps in front of him. And Jesus is taking, he takes his attention off of Jairus and begins to put his attention on this woman. Are you hearing me? And so now Jarius is just standing there waiting. Waiting. God, I need you to come today. God, my situation is crucial. I, I can't wait till tomorrow. I got some things I need to get done. And it looked like you got me on hold. I I'm getting frustrated. I'm, I'm getting aggravated. I'm, I'm losing my cool. I'm losing, I'm losing my strength. I'm, come on. Have you ever prayed and you just mm, God I ask you about it but you just, well and then you use the scripture you said if I ask anything in your name you would you said it would be done but what 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 where, 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 where are you God of waiting. Some of you is in the waiting room. Ah, yeah, waiting for your name to be called. Come on, and it, sometimes it seems like, have you ever been in the doctor's office and it seemed like they don't call the person that came in behind you first? And here it is, you got there before them. Huh? You know, are you in the nail shop? I done had that experience. And somebody done walked in, got in the chair before me, and I'm sitting down like, I feel like acting a fool up in here. But I might have a member around the corner might see me go off and... But, but, but you're waiting and they step in front of you. And you know you were there before them. The audacity. If you anything like me, I'd be just huffing and puffing, you know, because I'm... I'm a pastor, I can't say nothing, so I'm just like, I'm just like, Lord, I feel like telling them, I know they didn't. I know they didn't. So Jarius is waiting while Jesus deal with this woman that came in after him. And, and, and it seemed like as if Jesus is not even in a hurry. 
that even though I told him my situation was crucial, he's not getting in a rush. Jesus, my brother Lazarus is at the point of death. And he get there four days after Lazarus died. And Martha is one of them black sisters. I know she had to been because she had a bad attitude. She said, now if you would have been here whenever we first called for you, we wouldn't be in this predicament but because you came in here late. You could have fixed this situation a long time ago, but now you left us stuck with the, with the debt bill and with the debt bill. Come on, we got to pay these morticians. You should have been up in here. She had an attitude, you know, because Jesus seemed to be taking his time. Well, what's taking you so long? It don't take that long to, to work a miracle. You're God. If you speak it, it'll happen. What's up with that? Chariots is waiting, and Jesus is in no hurry. Are you hearing me? He's dealing with everybody else in front of me when my situation is crucial. Are you hearing me? So the question is, what do you do? Glory to God, when all hell is broken loose in your life, amen, and you're left waiting. Are you hearing me? Huh? Well, well, what do you do, glory to God, when things have come up against your family and your marriage and you're just waiting? Huh? What do you do when it doesn't look like God is interested in what you're dealing with? Come on, somebody. And you have to stand there and watch other people get blessed in front of you. And that's what Jarius' situation is. He's standing there and he's watching Jesus bless somebody else in front of him. Like his situation don't deserve no attention. Mm, y'all not mad enough for me because y'all, you to tow your row up if you get good and mad about it. <laughs> so, so, so he's watching him bless this woman and Jarius is just left there standing and waiting and watching that the people get blessed in front of him. Come on, somebody. You prayed for the vehicle. Your neighbor down the road got it. You've been single a long time and sister only got, she got divorced two years ago and getting married again. And you've been asking God for 10 years for a husband. Come on, what do you do when all you got to do is wait on God? Are you hearing me? What do you do? How do you handle your weight? Are you hearing me? And so this Jairus is, he's confused. He's, he's, he's confused, he's afraid, come on, and he's falling to the place of no hope because his situation is on a time frame. And if Jesus don't hurry up, then his daughter is going to die. Are you hearing me? Come on, somebody. And so Jarius, what he's trying to do, he's trying to get Jesus to his house. And sometimes, amen, you may not want to testify of it in this room because your neighbor might be your best friend. But sometimes you need Jesus to come to your house. Yeah. Jarius is saying, I need you, God, to come to my house. I got some situations in my house. I got some circumstances in my house. I need you to come to my house. I need you to fix this situation. I need you to fix this marriage. I need you to fix my finances. I need you to deal with my children. I need you to visit my house. Come on, can you invite God to your house? I dare you to tell him to come to my house. We got some issues at my house. I know you don't want nobody to know it, but there are some issues in the house. And Jesus, I need you to come to my house. And I need you to come today. Because if you don't come right now, my thing is going to die. This situation going to die. This thing is going to fall to pieces. This thing is going to fall apart. I need you to hurry up. Come, come to my house. Come visit my family. We need a visitation. Step, step into my situation. Come on, somebody. 
He's inviting Jesus over to his house. Amen. And verse 35 says that, wow, wow, Jesus, here it is. He's, he's healed this woman who's had her issue, amen, for 12 years. And he ignores Jairus and kind of put Jairus on the back burner while he deal with another individual. But the Bible says, amen, in verse 35, that while Jesus is done dealing with the woman with her situation, here comes the ruler of the synagogues. Here comes Jairus' people, they coming to him, and they telling him, Jairus, don't worry about it. Your, your daughter is dead, it's too late now. Don't even bother Jesus, don't even trouble the master. Your situation has expired. Come on, huh? It, it, it has already expired, it's, a, it's over, it's over. What you was praying for, it's over. What you was hoping for, it's over now, it's done. It's a dead issue. It's a dead thing. Ain't no need to praying about it no more. Ain't no need to bothering Jesus no more. Ain't no need to telling God about it no more. It's a done situation. It's a dead thing. It's over. I know you was hoping. I know you was believing. I know you was praying. I know you were looking for something to happen in your life. But I came to, with some bad news. It's done. It's over. You got to watch folk that come in your life to bring bad news. Some people have been designed to bring you some bad news. Come on, you already been in the waiting line and here they gonna come and tell you ain't no need to pray no more. Ain't no need to believe God no more. It's too late now. The judge already said what he had to say. The loan officer already told you no. You ought to just go and stay out of that neighborhood now. That ain't for you. That's for them. You ain't invited here. Come on, you, you don't need nobody in this season to bring you no bad news while you waiting. Some people love to bring bad news. Oh, God. So they say, don't bother the master. It's too late now. It's done. She's dead. And as soon as Jesus heard the words that they were speaking, come on, somebody, and he heard the words of the ruler of the synagogue, Jesus began to speak to Jairus and say, be not afraid, but only believe. Are you hearing me? Don't be afraid, only believe. I know you got the bad report, but it's still not over. I wish I had a church. It's not left in the hand of the judge. It's not left in the hand of the doctor. It's not left in the hand of your boss. They may have fired you, but God has only dismissed you so he can elevate you. Say, neighbor, just believe. Come on, tell somebody else. Say, you gotta keep believing. Tell them again. Say, you gotta keep believing. Say, not all things are lost. Keep believing. I don't care what it looks like in the natural. Keep believing. Don't you let a temporary circumstance place a permanent decision on your life. Cause everything that is temporal means it's subject to change. In any given moment, tell your neighbor, just believe. Hey. Give me a little higher key, just believe. Come on, somebody. So, 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 so I want you to understand my assignment on this morning as I hurry up. Oh, God Almighty. Today, my assignment on this morning, glory to God, is to speak to my dead daughters. I didn't come for everybody. But I came to speak to my dead daughters. I come to tell your daughter, believe. I come to tell you, keep believing. That thing that is locked up inside of you, it might be lying dormant, but it's not dead. Your dream is not dead. Your vision is not dead. Your hope is not dead. Your expectation is not dead. Your prayers are not dead. I come to speak to my dead daughters and I come to tell you believe. Yeah. Yeah. I'm on an assignment this morning.
wanting to get you up. I said I'm on an assignment to, this morning to call you out of that dead place. I'm on an assignment this morning to get you out of obscurity and to bring you to the place of notoriety. I'm on an assignment this morning to rebuke that dead thing in your life and to cause you to rise and shine for your light has come and Have a seat. Jesus, 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 take a This thing is about to turn. Tell your neighbor, this thing is about to turn. I've only come to people that got some faith to believe. Amen. Yeah, I tell your neighbor, this thing is about to turn. Oh, I wish I had a church. So, yeah. so, 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 Jesus, Jesus. Getting ready now. He's paying attention to Jairus. Come on, somebody. And sometimes God will test your faith and to see if you'll still believe him. He'll keep you in waiting just to test your faith. To see if you still have confidence that God is able to do exceeding abundantly above all you can ask or think. God put you on wait for on purpose so he can test your endurance to see if what you're believing for is worthy of you waiting for it. Because good things come to those who wait. If you wait long enough, that means what you're believing for is so big and so huge and it means so much to you that you'll go through the fire to get it and you'll go through the flood to get it and you'll suffer persecution to get it but come hell or high waters you're not gonna let go of the horns of the altar until you get victory I don't have a choice disciples three of them amen Peter James and John he takes them with him amen and he gets to Jairus's house he comes to the home of this leader amen and there's a lot of things going on when he get there see 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 it's a dangerous thing see watch this watch this some people don't want him to come because they got too much going on and they don't want God to see the mess that's going on in the house Hey God, how? How many of you know that the eyes of the Lord is in every place anyway? Yeah. Uh -huh. He already see your situation. He's just waiting for an invitation. That's it. That's all. That's it. That's all. Watch this. So, so then, now he gets to Jairus's house, and there's a lot going on. There's a whole lot of commotion. There's a whole lot of crying. There's a whole lot of confusion that is happening in the house. Are you hearing me? Because some people don't know how to handle a crisis. Are you listening to me? And you got to learn to be the strong man of your house. I'm talking to men and women, you got to learn. You got to learn to be the strong person in the house. That when a crisis happens, you know how to stand and keep your head above the waters. You're the one that's gonna keep it together. You're gonna keep them, you're gonna keep everybody together. Oh, God. When, when people get at their wits' ends and they don't know what to do with the crisis situation, you're the one that steps in in faith and calm the atmosphere and keep your house in order, women. Wow, wasn't that a powerful word? I know you enjoyed it. Listen, you can get this word in its entirety. Go to our website, cornerstonezone.com. And I want to encourage you to stay connected with our ministry. You can look for us through all of our social media outlets. Listen, our time is up, but I look forward to connecting with you again soon. God bless you. Bye-bye.